I, uh, I want to make this video to help everybody who does believe in the things that the Lord has revealed to me. Some people think it's teachings. Some people think it's lessons. Some people, I think to me, uh, Marion Lynch, that it's revelations. He gives me constant revelations of the truth. I give them out. I am not trying to do anything else but give what he gives me. I may be off of YouTube. That doesn't bother me. I may willingly leave YouTube, mainly because I do have access to other platforms. And because of that, uh, it's uh, more difficult for me to have to do videos all the time on YouTube when there's so many videos, videos out there that every one of you can learn from even one of them. If you go into uh, how far back so many of mine are, if it were me and I got a lot of help from listening to a person, I would go back into their videos and start copying them in case they leave. Because those pla those uh, videos are probably going to show up on different platforms. Uh, the, the revelations of the truth that grow uh, are coming to a place where I believe they only belong in books. Uh, I'm going to be taking a lot of things and doing some books now. Of course, I'm going to need support for that, and I'm asking no one. I ask you, please, please, if you do not have a lot of money, do not try to gift me. If you do not have enough money to pay the taxes on the gift or to uh, so make the gifts tax-free, if you do not have enough money to be able to give freely and easily where I don't have to pay a penny because I can't, I won't be able to accept anything that requires any part of me doing anything, right? That I'm saying to those who God may speak to and they may give want to give enough for me to be able to publish books. <laughs> if I had my own publishing company and had somebody to run it, I believe you me, I would do it now. But I don't. But those of you who especially have little children, who especially have barely enough to put on your table and put shoes on the feet of your children, please, please don't send me a penny. Please don't give me any money at all. Your blessings, your love, your your search for God, your your ability to help your children and listen to some of these videos and be a better mother and be a better father and, and be better at what you are, wherever you're at. That is reward enough for me. I don't want anything else. And I've said it before and I will say it again. God supplies all of my needs. I'm actually sitting in a place where God supplies my needs. So that is no concern. And God will supply my needs for writing and publishing books. That is going to happen. Any other kind of platform or media, God will supply it. I am not afraid of YouTube or any other platform that decided like Twitter to ban me. It's their loss. They will never learn or understand unless they listen to God, not me. I'm nothing. I give a message. Accept it 
or don't accept it. Love it or hate it. Whichever it is between you and God. I have nothing to do with it. Those of you who accept it and believe that God has given it to me, I'm telling you, uh, my prayers are with you. I'm completely 100% for your quest for God, for your seeking God, for your chasing after God to find out all about him. I did that. I did that till I found him. And that's what you must do. And I hope and pray that you do. I hope and pray that you find the tremendous secrets of Jesus Christ in his word, in the truth. I hope and pray that, that you go on no matter what. Now, I'm not saying I'm going anywhere. What I'm trying to do and wanting to do is to prepare you with a just in case. Because you don't know if suddenly everything just won't be turned off. You don't know if suddenly something might happen to change. So if you do copy a lot of these videos and you do have any kind of leadership of God, go through them and, and let God say, take this, copy this one, copy this one, copy, because they will be the ones you need. God led me to give them, telling me and revealing to me that somebody needs the truth. The truth will set you free. It frees the mind, it frees the body, it frees the soul. Forgiveness has a freedom. For having a forgiving heart towards everybody does not mean that you do not know that people by God are going to be held responsible. But when you hold that in your heart as the key, oh, you can't wait till they do this, you can't. It's none of your business. Get your hands off of it. Get your hands off of everybody else in life. And let God set you free. For he will take care of what people have done. He will take care of it. You may think, oh, they need this to happen. They need that to happen. You're not God. You're not their judge. You're not, you are not the one to settle things, to understand things. You are nothing more than what I am, a child of the king. And you must be obedient to your heart and your mind in Christ, which means to pick up your cross, learn of him, and obey him. Do not allow things to distract you. Do not allow it, because this is a terrible, terrible hour. Now, if you are the kind of person that listens to my videos and you take what you want to out of them as though you're doing right when you are not, people do not hate you or persecute you because you're so right. If you're running around like an idiot, screaming and yelling at people, pointing your finger and accusing them of being a narcissist, of being this and being that, something is wrong with you. Now, I've talked to people about this before, and they just totally wipe it out and say she doesn't understand. I've got news for you. I understand everything about you. I will, I, no matter how many times you come and put an amen and tell me how nice and sweet I am or tell me anything I want you to know, the second your name comes up, I see you exactly where you are and you are in the wrong pew. Hypoc hypocrisy, being a hypocrite where you run rampant roughshod over everybody in your life and you take all the good for yourself. I don't make mistakes. I don't do wrong. I don't have this problem. It's them. If this is messed up, you have taken the wrong step. Listen to what I'm telling you. Let God change your mind about that. I told you the disciples when Jesus said, one of you will betray me, they said, is it I, Lord? 
Your attitude is not, is it I? Your attitude is, it's them, it's him, it's her, it's them. As long as this finger is pointing, read Isaiah, put away the finger pointing. You say, well, they're pointing at me. You know what? God will allow that if you won't listen. God will allow you to go through things if you won't listen. And you know what? You may lose your home, your children, your wife or husband. You may lose everything because of your stubborn rebellion, which works like the sin of witchcraft, and it keeps you blind. And it keeps you striving to control, to prove that you are something you are not. And I want you to know, the Lord has your number. He has the truth. I pray, thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, that he break through that stronghold. And he bind that strong man in you that screams and yells, I'm something and you're nothing. In the name of Jesus, whoever is doing this, wherever they're doing this, however they're running roughshod over their whole life and their family, because they are determined to have and do what they want because they want to be something they are not. I pray for mercy that you be humbled into a position of knowing you are the one that is wrong. You are the one that crossed the line of demarcation. If you're a woman and you do things that hurt, deliberately hurt people, and, and you believe that God is with you, oh my goodness, I wouldn't be in your shoes. And if you're a man and you dare, I mean dare, to lay a hand on your wife, and you grab a hold of her and you shove her, you have just crossed over a line of respect. You may never come back at us. Because when you touch her, you dare to put your hands on any other human being to control them. You're on your way to destroying everything in your heart and your mind. Don't go there. Listen to God. When you hear a voice that tells you you're right and they're wrong, don't go there. It's not according to the word of God. Jesus would never do that. When it tells you that you just got to do something to stop them from this and stop them from that, don't go there. It's the wrong view. It's the wrong voice. It's the voice of hell that wants to take you in the wrong place. When you hear that voice that tells you that they're hurting you and they're, they're all against you, that's paranoia. Don't go there. Don't go there. The word of God teaches you completely different. God says, judge not lest you be judged. Don't judge them all to be wrong and you're the only one right. Don't go there. You're kind and sweet one day, and as soon as you think you got it made, boom. Then you go back to your old ways. God doesn't operate that way. Your kindness and your sweetness better last forever. So you need to get on your knees and cry out to God and ask God to forgive you and to lead you to repentance and lead you out of you. That's why I gave my testimony about how God helped me overcome me. I'm talking to individuals that do these things and still claim God. Do these things and claim that God showed them. God told God didn't show you anything. God did not tell you to run rampant and hurt anyone. When you take an individual into your hands and you crush them, to the point they wind up in a hospital. You take them and you hold on to them and you hug them till you crush their ribs inside and you do it deliberately. And you think that's not the devil? And you dare claim Jesus Christ.
You are allowing a monster to live inside of you. You let it in. And only you can repent of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break through that wall, through that power that is trying to destroy this person, whether it's a woman or whether it's a man. In the name, thank you, Jesus. I know that the enemy says there is nothing you can do, but it's not true. If God can save me, he can save you. If God can intervene and lead me to repentance, he can lead other people to repentance. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Because actually, I was worse than you in different ways. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And he pulled me through it all. He made me sweet. He made me kind. He made me loving. And he made me understanding. He took that which was nothing and he turned it into something. Don't you see, in the name of Jesus, whatever this is, if it comes from the generations, in the name of Jesus, Father, I ask you to forgive every generation, every mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, acquaintance, every church, every pastor that has ever cursed these kind of people, that they will never find this, they will never hear that, they will never know, they will never see. In the name of Jesus, those are lies. For God can reach past and Help anyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let a healing begin. Let a truth come up and a healing begin by first of all saying, I could be wrong. That is what God wants our hearts to say. If this one is against me, it's because I may have done something to deserve it. If that one is against me, and this one, and that one, and this one, what did I do wrong, Lord? Search me, Lord, and help me to find it. Don't take what you think that I'm saying as though you got it all, because you're suffering. You're suffering the consequences of what you've done. You're suffering the consequences of where you went in your mind and your heart. You're not suffering a Christian suffering. You're suffering because you have done evil in his name. That's why you suffer. And you can't get out of it because you won't listen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, that strong man that refuses to listen inside of whoever this is that you're talking to, I bind it. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, if you've got to leave this soul so completely without anything, do it, Lord, because it is better for them than to perish forever. Stop them. Do not let them touch their family, touch their, their loved ones, touch anybody. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every part of them that can do someone else harm and harm to themselves, I bind it. Let there never be an opportunity. Let there never be a chance to do this in the name of Jesus. I've seen you do it, Lord. I've seen you make sure that nothing can reach like that. Now, I saw a young man on, and, and I, uh, on the internet today that was striving to reveal the truth. And when I heard his words and he said, I'm terrified. Oh, Father, I'm praying for him to never be terrified of what people do and what people warn. Because he's already taken a step towards doing the truth. He's already taken a step towards listening to you. And I pray that you bless him with it. I pray that he see clearly that when God shuts one door, he opens another. And that he could never open the other door without first shutting that door. So don't be afraid, sir. Young man, you're precious in the sight of God. When you strive to do what is right, you are precious. And I pray that you listen to this message and you hear it and you rest. You go home no matter what anybody has done to you, whether it's YouTube shutting you off, whatever it is, go home and rest. Go before God. And let God take care of you. 
sometimes what we go through is so traumatic, we need a rest. So terrible to us that we need a rest, rest in him. Look up. Look up and see a Savior that loves you. Oh, say, Lord, I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm not perfect, Lord, and forgive me, but save me from me. Just like that very powerful, strong man. Save him, Lord, from himself. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All of the bipolar uh, schizophrenia, all of that that has been narcissism, all of that has been attacking him and, and he's been reveling in it, walking in it, in the name of Jesus, set him free of it. Heal him, Lord. As he turns away, give him the power to see and turn away. Turn away from it, sir. Turn away. Turn away from fear. Turn away from unbelief. Turn away from lies. Go to the gentleness, the kindness, and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if it is not gentle, if it is not a sweetness, it's not a truth. The truth, yes, I speak it firmly. I speak it powerfully to those that need it. But to those that love me and those that are doing what is right with God and love God, I speak with a gentle, gentle voice. I speak with kindness, great kindness. Feel it right now. Feel that God is speaking to you, not me. He is speaking to you with a gentleness and a kindness saying, I love you. I'm going to take care of you. Don't be afraid of the unknown. Don't be afraid of where you have to go. God will take care of you. Hold his hand tight. Some of you are being so persecuted, you don't know which direction to go. You don't know how to be. You don't know where to go. Let God give you guidance. Thank you, Father. I'm going to close this now, but I wanted to let people know that if I disappear, don't depend upon me. Depend upon God. You know, I've seen churches that have fallen apart and they trusted so much in their pastor they didn't know which direction to go don't do that with my with me and my videos no no which direction to go it's jesus christ not me it's his love for you not mine 